Hello again Struck Club. Today I'm bringing you the first build video I'm making for the Ascent. And this one will be an interesting build. It will be the heal and beam or beam and heal build, whatever you want to call it. There's beam and there's heals, um, which is the important thing. And it's a strange build and I will try and uh, go through the skills, the gear I like to use, the augmentations, tactical, etc. And there will be some flexibility. I think the best uh, place to start would be the passive skills. And I will try to go through how you might want to go uh, on about those passive skills as you level up. So maybe not doing it like me will be the best way. I started with critical hit rate uh, when leveling up, but maybe it would be best to leave that as the third thing you max out. I would say if you manage to get your hands on the beam and the healing skills, you might want to invest into energy first. But um, I'd say go HP first, then either energy or crit rate second then the other one um, third and once you have hp crit rate and energy maxed out then you might want to go for reward if you like me are using a rocket launcher however if you're using another weapon that doesn't need the reward and swap speed as much uh, then something you might want to consider will be getting uh, tactical sense there are other things that could be nice, um, such as balance or evasion, but again, those are not that important for, for the way I play that build. So after we've checked the skills, let's move on to the next part. Here we are on the world out. I would say you want RPG-23 launcher. You want to be focusing uh, your upgrades on this one. Get it to Mark 10, which is the limit, um, as soon as you can. I mean, keep keep investing into this one. Sure, you might have another weapon that you like and keep it as your secondary. For example, I really like the Magma Maker as a, as a flamethrower, and I think upgrading the, mag the Magma Maker would uh, make it pretty fun uh, as a secondary weapon. But I would say use the RPG launcher and for your other weapon, just use whatever. I, I only use the launcher, honestly. I don't switch to my other weapon. Now, for the tactical, I would say good choices are the auto turret, the pocket mech and the stasis drone. The pocket mech is pretty much like a little bit of extra survivability. You pop that mech, you go inside, and uh, while you're inside that mech, some other things could recharge, cool down. It's like a second life for a few seconds. So I personally love the pocket mech, and I strongly urge people to test it. If they don't like it, they can try the stasis drone or the turret. And there is one more thing I got after recording the first part uh, about the tactical, and this is the rejuvenation field. And the reju field is something that heals you and the enemies. So if it's that important for you to survive, even if it means healing your enemies, the rejuvenation field is nice. And you can try and not let enemies get inside the rejuvenation field um, and just uh, hold your position. I think it's a good uh, replacement if you don't like the pocket mech or the turret or the drone, the reju field is there for you. Now for the augmentations, augmentation slot 1, neutron beam, must have. Augmentation SWAT 2, Life Transfer, must have. This is how um, the build works. When you use Life Transfer, you mark an enemy, um, you mark enemies in an area around your cursor. So make sure your cursor is near uh, a bunch of enemies. You would kind of get used to knowing how big that circle is. And yeah, you mark the enemies and then mark the enemies uh, will take damage and heal you as they take damage. And if you pop the beam, this will be a lot of damage very quickly, which means a lot of healing very quickly. The cooldown on the life transfer is 70 seconds, but the cooldown on the beam is 15 seconds. Um, and if you have a lot of motorics, this will increase the this will increase the duration. So if you if you put points into weapon handling and aiming, Keep in mind aiming, I didn't mention anything about aiming in the skill segment, but if you want more duration of the beam, you would have to max out weapon handling and aiming. Um, 
But yeah, back to back to life transfer um, and the beam. Uh, those are the two you want, the two augmentations. But when we go to modules, to passive modules, I would say Vitasign Booster. I love this. I love this and I think um, you should try and use it as well. Extra HP is always nice. Now, module slot number two. I'm right now using Speed Heal. Because I think it's nice. I think it increases that life transfer healing uh, and it's, it's good. But if you think that you don't need Speed Heal, Javelin Dash or Tactical Charge are good choices. Uh, I was using Javelin Dash during my campaign playthrough. Um, I didn't get the, the, the Speed Heal until later on. But uh, you might want to get the Speed Heal um, instead. The armor is a little tricky. With the armor, sure, there are resistances and you would want high resistances. But every armor has some additional things um, going on for it. For example, this one here gives you crit rate. Um, two internal and two upper body. So do you want to go for more crit rate? But if going would going for crit rate sacrifice too much defenses? Basically, you would want to get things like crit rate, things like um, the the reward speed, things like vital signs, so you can get more HP. Um, there are a lot of things to consider. I would say try to get crit rate as high as possible and defense as high as possible. Things like body energy are also pretty nice for a build like this in the beginning where you don't have enough energy to be able to cast two skills at the same time. Uh, if you don't have enough energy to, to do this which costs, as you can see, it costs 75 energy and this one as you can see costs 75 energy. If you don't have 150 energy, you won't be able to do them back to back. Which, uh, which is where energy uh, increasing armor comes very handy at the early levels. So if you have something li like that with body energy or something like, um, where was it, this one uh, with six body energy, that would be very good as, as the start. But right now your priority would be on a little bit of body energy, a little bit of crit hit rate, and after that get as much defenses as possible. Sure, there are other things that are good, like vital signs for HP, like um, like balance um, to to let you to let you get immunity or not immunity but resistance to stuns and knockbacks. It's not bad to have that, but don't prioritize that as much. Keep in mind your skills scale from different things. This one scales from cybernetics, which means from the green stats, the crit chance and and this one, uh, Tactical Sense. Whereas the other one scales from Weapon Handling and Aiming from the blue stats. Um, so keep that in mind. If you're using slightly different um, different skills, you might want to focus on slightly different um, stats to get. Overall, the armor is the trickiest part to get right of a build. And since you're constantly fi finding new things, you might want to, to constantly um, shift your focus from one place to another on one piece uh, and uh, from one place to another on the other piece. You cannot upgrade armor, but as you go um, through the game, you would keep finding better and better armor, starting with white, then bronze, then silver, then gold, and eventually moving on to the purple one. Um, I hope this wasn't too, too difficult to understand. Uh, it's very difficult to explain it properly, I think. But if you have more questions, feel free to use the comment section um, uh, and I can try and make it clearer if it's needed. And that pretty much should sum up the build setup. And here I'm gonna quickly say a couple of words about how to play the build, about the gameplay. It's not that difficult, you just uh, get in a group of enemies and beam them. And if you need to heal up, you can just use life transfer to mark them and then beam to heal up as you do damage to the marked enemies. In the meantime, spam your launcher, uh, reuse your beam whenever it's ready and just dodge and uh, if you're using the mech use the mech if you're not using the mech and using the rejuvenation field obviously use that when it's necessary just make sure that enemies don't enter the rejuvenation field if you're using one with the mech you will be kind of very slow but 
any damage the mech takes uh, doesn't seem to take uh, away from your energy from your um, HP and you can also pick up med kits to heal your own self while inside the mech so use it wisely I personally really love that mech it's very fun while you're on it um, but some of you as I said might prefer the rejuvenation field or the drone or the turret just just to try to to get the right um, time when to use the tactical and the right time when to use life transfer before beaming to get notified when i upload more content for this game or uh, other games like this one which would be wooters of all varieties isometric uh, third person arpgs uh, wooter shooters and all sorts of uh, wooters like that you could subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out uh, on my content updates and optionally you can even join as a member of the struck club uh, on youtube as a channel member to get access to exclusive perks such as um, special emotes custom made by me special badges custom made by me that represents how many months you have been a member for uh, as well as uh, opt-in uh, of editing tutorials that I can give for Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, as well as uh, shout outs and things like that. And I would like to use this uh, part of the video to thank all my um, YouTube members and uh, Twitch subscribers. Thank you for supporting the channel and keeping me going. Uh, thank you also for watching this video, everyone. Keep it cool, uh, Struck Club. Until next time, and goodbye.